I wish to welcome you to yet another lecture on histology, where in this particular lecture, we are going to look at uh, histological organization of the embryonic connective tissues. This is part one of the lecture series on connective tissues as a whole. Because we have several connective tissues, we couldn't have just one session full of them. So I've chosen to divide this into smaller pieces for delivery purposes. The most significant thing, or one of the most significant things we're going to notice in embryonic connective tissues is that these are tissues with abundant ground substance. And in this particular lecture, we are going to see what is ground substance. Before we go into that, perhaps let's just remind ourselves about the hierarchical organization of the body. We know that the body is organized in a particular hierarchy from simple to complex levels. We can start with the level of the atoms, which are basically the smallest unit of an element that participate in chemical reactions. Therefore, when atoms combine in those chemical reactions, they form molecules. Molecules on this end are smallest unit of element or compound that can exist on their own. For us to build the body, these molecules combine to form other large molecules, which we call macromolecules. Examples of macromolecules that build up the body include carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids. And so when these four macromolecules combine, they form the cellular organelles, which are the structural units of the cell with some specific functions. These organelles therefore form part of the cell or when they combine, they constitute the cell. We may have varied definition of what the cell is, but the most conventionally available definition of the cell is that the cell is the basic unit of a living organism. There are several cells in the body when we combine them into types, again, we still have some several types of cells in the body. We can, however, group these cells into some tissues. And still, we have several tissues in the body, although these tissues can be grouped into four major classes, and we're going to see which are these four major classes of tissues. Anyway, when tissues combine, they form organs, and when organs combine, they form organ systems, and finally, organ systems combine to form the organism back to the tissues. When we talk of tissues, what are we really referring to? So tissues, we not just refer to cells only. Yes, it's a group of cells, but tissues also include the material, the biological material between the cells. We call that biological material between the cell, the extracellular matrix. It may also just be called the matrix or you may call it the intercellular matrix. Inter would mean between the cells, intercellular between cells. Extracellular would mean outside the cell. And basically, the two mean the same in this particular context. If something is between cells, then it's definitely outside the cell. Well, this matrix also contains some water. The water within tissues is what we call the interstitial fluid, and its amount will vary depending on the tissue that we're talking about. I've mentioned that although we have several types of tissues in the body, we can group these tissues into four major classes. The first one, which we've already covered in another session, is the epithelial tissues. Epithelial tissues refer to group of cells which cover body surfaces, whether external or internal surfaces. One of the unique things about epithelial tissues is that the cells are very closely packed and therefore the matrix, the material between the cells is very minimal if it's there. The second basic tissue is what we call the connective tissues. The connective tissue generally provides support to different organs that they are found in 
one of the unique things about connective tissues is that they have a lot of matrix. Now that's quite an opposite of what the epithelial tissues are made up of. Epi while epithelial tissues are made up largely of cells and very minimal matrix, connective tissue glories in the presence of a lot of matrix. In this particular lecture, because connective tissues are of different types, we will have to break it down. And that's why in this particular, and we're just looking at one entity of the connective tissues, which is the embryonic connective tissues. But because this is the first part of the lectures on connective tissues, which is supposed to give you a classification, a general classification of the connective tissues. Now, the third basic tissue is nervous tissue. Nervous tissue consists of specialized excitable cells, which we call neurons which are able to both generate electrical impulses called action potentials, and also conduct these electrical impulses. So they're important in communication. Lastly, we have propulsion tissues. Propulsion tissues consist of cells which have the ability to contract. And this is largely the muscle tissue generally, although contractile cells are not just limited to muscles, the other cells that may also contract, which are not muscles, but largely of muscle tissue. So with that in perspective, we are looking at this series on connective tissues. And so the learning outcome of this particular lecture specifically would be first to give us an introductory overview of the components and classification of connective tissues so that we have a perspective. After that, then we are going to narrow to our subject matter, or let me say main subject matter, which is to name and state the key characteristics of the embryonic connective tissues. And finally, we will state the distribution and role of each of the embryonic connective tissues that we are going to mention. So basically that's our main agenda, quite straightforward and a short lecture indeed. Let's focus on the first particular objective or first learning outcome. So we look at the components of connective tissue and classification of connective tissues. So we've already said that all tissues are made up of cells and matrix. With that in mind, connective tissues are not left behind. They're also made up of cells and the matrix. I want to say more about the matrix of connective tissues. The matrix of connective tissues consists of two elements or two major components. We have connective tissue fibers and we have what you call the ground substance. The ground substance is a gel-like material that holds the cells together. This gel-like material contains both organic as well as inorganic components or substances. So in this particular image, this zone will be considered to be the ground substance. Of course, these are cells. That's another cell. That's another cell. That's another cell. So this material between cells and also not part of fiber system is what I'm calling the ground substance. Then we have the connective tissue fibers. Connective tissue fibers are protein filaments which are present within the matrix of connective tissues. And these protein filaments have different varieties and functions. In this particular lecture, let me just say that we have two major types of connective tissue fibers, the collagen fibers, which confer strength to connective tissues and elastic fibers that provide elastic recoil properties to connective tissues or to the organs they're found in. 
we will elaborate more about connective tissue fibers in the next session where we are going to talk about the fibrous connective tissues. Okay, so let's talk about the classification of connective tissues. Generally, connective tissues vary significantly in the morphology of their matrices. And it's because of this variation in the morphology of their matrices that we are able to classify connective tissues into different types, largely. So they'll vary in the amount of the matrix. So that means that some tissues have quite a lot of matrix. Some connective tissues have moderate amount of matrix. Some connective tissue may still have less amount of matrix. They also vary on the content or composition of this matrix. There are some matrices that will have some particular protein elements while not have another. Some matrices will have different proportion of uh, these particular elements that you're talking about. Some matrices may be calcified, some of them may not be calcified. And uh, the organization of the contents also vary. For example, there are some matrices which have a lot of collagen fibers. These collagen fibers run parallel or they're uniformly arranged, while others, these collagen fibers are not necessarily uniformly arranged. So in principle, connective tissues vary a lot based on the morphology of their matrix. And for this reason, we are therefore able to classify connective tissues based on this variation of the matrix. Some connective tissues are largely found in the embryonic tissues or fetal life, and we don't see quite a lot of them postnatally, while others are seen throughout life. And so that perhaps is where we begin the classification of connective tissues. We can therefore say that we classify connective tissues under two major umbrella. We have the embryonic connective tissues and we have the adult type of connective tissues. When we talk of embryonic connective tissues, we are referring to tissues which are predominant in the embryonic and fetal tissues. We're not saying that they're only found in the embryo, not true. Yes, they are found in the embryo in quite larger proportions compared to the proportions that we see in the postnatal life. So they're still present postnatally, except postnatally they are sparsely distributed. So the more of their volumes are seen in the prenatal life. Those are embryonic connective tissues, which is the subject matter of this particular talk. But let's contrast this with what we call the adult type of connective tissue. It might be tempting to call adult type of connective tissues the tissues that are found in adults only, but that would be wrong. Adult type of connective tissues are connective tissues which persist throughout life. So they'll be there prenatally or maybe they're prenatally, definitely they're there postnatally. So they persist throughout life in their predominance. So we're not saying that postnatally their volume become less. No, their volume is still there. Even in the immediate postnatal life, they're still present. So we're not just looking at adult only, they are present in the neonatal period, in the infancy period, in the early and late childhood, they are still present. And yes, it, up to all they are still present and in their predominance. However, this adult type of connective tissues may still be present even prenatally and not necessarily in sparse amounts. They might still be there in quite a good amounts so make that distinction correct. Don't be tempted to say that other type of connective tissue are not present in the 
prenatal life. Also, don't be tempted to say they are there, but very minimal. That's not true. They are not necessarily sparse in the prenatal period. They are still present and they persist in their predominance throughout life. Now, we classify embryonic connective tissues into two categories, mesenchymal connective tissues, or you can just call it mesenchyme, and mucus connective tissues, which you can just call mucus tissue. For the adult type of connective tissues, we classify them into two major classes. We have what we call the fibrous connective tissues. The fibrous connective tissues are connective tissues whose matrices are predominantly of fibrous tissue. Or let me put it this way. The matrix of fibrous connective tissues consists of a lot of collagenous fibers. So those are fibrous connective tissues. They're predominantly fibrous matrix. We can call this entity connective tissue proper, or we can also call this entity generalized connective tissues. In the classification of fibrous connective tissues, we divide them into two major classes based on the density of the collagen fibers within their matrix. If the collagen fibers within these matrices is not quite a lot, which means that uh, the collagen fibers are sparsely uh, found or distributed, then we call it loose connective tissue. If the collagenous fibers are closely packed, then we call it dense connective tissue. Dense connective tissue may further be classified into two depending on the direction of the collagen fibers. If the collagen fibers contained with this particular, within this particular tissue run in a uniform direction, then you call this dense regular connective tissue. And we'll see examples of this when you look at the lecture on fibrous connective tissues. If the collagen fibers are not running in a particular uniform direction and the fibers are closely packed, then we call this dense irregular connective tissue. So we can say in general that there are three types of fibrous connective tissues, the loose connective tissues, dense regular connective tissue, and dense irregular connective tissue. Those are fibrous connective tissues. For the specialized connective tissues, we can also call them connective tissue with special properties. There's something quite unique or special about each of the specialized connective tissues. And again, their lecture will focus more on what is special about them. So we have the adipose tissue, we have cartilage, we have bone tissue, we have lymphoid tissue, and we have blood tissue. So this is the general classification of connective tissues. But remember the subject matter of this lecture is on the embryonic connective tissues. And so we can therefore move to our second main agenda of stating the key characteristics of embryonic connective tissues and also perhaps naming these embryonic connective tissues. So we can start by just naming them. There are two varieties of embryonic connective tissues as we've already mentioned, the mucus connective tissues and mesenchymal connective tissues, or you can just call it mesenchyme. They have some general features. One, these tissues are predominantly made up of the ground substance. So don't lose track of thought. Remember we said that connective tissues, just like in the tissue, will have cells and matrix. And we say that the matrix consists of connective tissue fibers and ground substance. So what we are saying here is that the embryonic connective tissues have more of the ground substance. In other words, less 
of the connective tissue fibers and less even more of the cells. So that brings us to another key significant feature of the embryonic connective tissues. The cells within these embryonic connective tissues are very few and uh, the connective tissue fibers within these tissues are also little. So very little connective tissue fibers and very few cells. Embryonic connective tissues are found predominantly within embryonic and or fetal umbilical cord, within embryonic tissues and fetal umbilical cord. So there's some particular embryonic tissues that will have this embryonic connective tissues. Not all embryonic tissues will have it, of course. And we're saying that even though large volumes of embryonic connective tissues will be found in the embryo, we have some embryonic connective tissues which persist throughout adulthood and they are found in some sparse uh, sites which we are going to mention shortly. Great, so in finishing, let's look at the distribution and role of each of the embryonic connective tissues. We can begin with the mucous connective tissues. This image illustrates to you how mucous connective tissue will typically look like. So these are cells. We can even count the cells in this particular field. And we can see the material between the cell is quite a lot. An interrogation of that material reveal that the material is predominantly of ground substance and less of the fibers. That's why we are saying that these tissues are predominantly of ground substance. The cells are very few and uh, connective tissue fibers are also quite little. Examples of mucous connective tissues include the Watton's jelly. Watton's jelly is a mucous connective tissue that is located within the umbilical cord of the fetus or embryo. It provides the structural support for the contents of the umbilical cord. This is histological cross-section of the umbilical cord showing the blood vessels so that these two are probably the arteries. We have the umbilical artery right and left. And uh, this one is probably the vein. The umbilical vein is usually one as we approach uh, second and third trimester of pregnancy. You could probably be seeing another structure there, which we call the allantois, but that's not the subject matter of this talk. So the subject matter is that this region here is the one that consists of the mucous tissue and specifically called Watton's jelly. It is a high magnification of that zone. So yes, we can see some cells, but this is a very low magnification. If you see high magnification, you see that the distance between the cells is quite significant and that uh, we have within that space the ground substance. Other than the Watton's jelly, which is located in the umbilical cord, we also have what we call the tooth pulp. Tooth pulp is the central part of our teeth that supports the neurovascular structures that enter or leave the teeth. You realize that uh, arteries will bring blood so that one enters, but veins and perhaps nerves, the nerves are sensory nerves, so they carry impacts away from the pulp. So this central part is made up of the mucous tissue as well. Last but not least, we also have mucous tissue in the nucleus pulposus of the intervertebral discs. The nucleus pulposus refers to the central part of the intervertebral disc. So this nucleus pulposus is also made up of mucous tissue. And remember, therefore, 
that tooth pulp and nucleus pulposus are actually present in adults, only the Watton's jelly would be a reserve for prenatal life. This image shows you onto your left the mucus tissue that we've just seen. The cells are quite few. The matrix is a lot. The image on your right shows you mesenchymal tissue. I want you to notice that the number of cells have probably increased. Um, the fibers may have slightly increased as well. The ground substance is still abundant, just like what it was in the mucus tissue. So this is mesenchymal tissue. Let's discuss mesenchymal tissue. Mesenchymal tissue is also having a lot of ground substance. It has fewer cells still, except that uh, the number of cells here are a bit more compared to what we noted for mucus tissue. It also has a particular arrangement of the cells. The cells are spindle-shaped and usually relatively uniform, which means they're not really so much haphazardly shaped. They are relatively of similar shape and they also usually a bit small cells. The connective tissue fibers within mesenchymal tissue is still little, except that it's slightly more than what we noted for mucus tissues. So this image shows you, maybe we start with this one, shows you a lot of ground substance, as you can see in that space or that space, that space. And some fibers definitely not so compact. If we were to see how dense, regular, or even loose connective tissue looks like, then we will acknowledge that this is not a lot of fibers. Even this not a lot of fibers, but we can see a lot of ground substance. These are the cells. This is ground substance. There are still fibers, yes, but not as much as what you'd expect for fibrous connective tissues. So the main function of mesenchymal tissue is that it functions as a primitive or primordial connective tissue. That means that uh, it is the one that is formed first before we can give rise to the other connective tissues of adult type in quotes. It gives rise to bone tissue, which will give rise to cartilage tissue, it gives rise to adipose tissue and the like. However, in addition to that, mesenchyme also gives rise to muscular tissue and uh, some components of blood vessels embryologically. So mesenchyme embryologically gives rise to connective tissue as well as muscles. It also gives rise to some vascular elements. Right, so that's mesenchymal tissue. And therefore, that brings us to the end of that lecture on embryonic connective tissues. Just a summary of what we mentioned. We mentioned that connective tissues are characterized by a lot of matrix. And it's based on this matrix that connective tissues are therefore classified. The components, the amount, and the organization of the matrix vary depending on connect tissue one to another. Now, in terms of classification, we've said that we have embryonic connective tissues and adult type of connective tissues. The adult type of connective tissues are predominantly found throughout life in large amounts. The embryonic connective tissues are predominantly found in the embryo but trace components of them are seen postnatally. Regarding these embryonic connective tissues, one of the unique things about them is that they have a lot of uh, ground substance. We've already mentioned that uh, they're predominant in the embryonic tissues and sparse in the postnatal life. That's one unique thing about them. The other unique thing about them is that they have a lot of ground substance. However, they have few cells and they have very little connective tissue fibers. There are two main varieties of uh, embryonic connective tissue, that's mucus tissue 
and mesenchymal tissues. Mucus tissue will be found in the Wharton's jelly that is around the umbilical cord, but also found in the nucleus pulposus of the intervertebral discs, as well as in the pulp of teeth postnatally. Mesenchymal tissue will be all over the embryo. This is the one that gives rise to the other connective tissues, although mesenchymal tissue also gives rise to muscle tissue and vascular elements. So that is it for the first class on histological organization of connective tissues. The second class we are going to have on connective tissue biology is organization of fibrous connective tissues. And we are going to see that these are tissues whose matrix are predominantly fibrous. Thank you very much. And uh, look out for the next recording on fibrous connective tissues.